Romanian pool. What? Romanian pool? Hermano, ese ejercicio es un deadlift. <laughs> Brother, that's a deadlift. Grüezi Petran, Gregory von Lebestag here. Buff Academy is a Spanish-speaking YouTube channel that was requested in the YouTube comment section. If you know anyone who's doing a kettlebell workout and you want my opinion on it, then let me know in the comments. So, he's using a 20 kilogram ejercicios con la pesa rusa, la kettlebell, para todos los amigos de la calle. <laughs> I speak a little bit, man. Just a little bit. Press the rango completo. So, that's more like a... Hmm. He pulls the kettlebell over here. It's not a press. You have to do a lot of pulling. He's decently strong with a 20 kilogram kettlebell. Question is if you put your shoulder in a delicate position. Swings a una mano. That's a one arm swing, right? At least he starts with the kettlebell in front of him. So he starts swinging. And as you can see already, he has to reach out. He really has to reach because the kettlebell's way outside the center of mass. Now, the kettlebell will go outside your center of mass, but you don't want it to go out too far. He's hinging, uh, deadlifting a little bit. So that will be a hinge with a knee bent, with a bent knee. But the timing is a little bit off. So he hinges too early. So no arm body connection. Kettlebell's already dropping. That's why he has to catch it with a some sort of deadlift. That's what you do when you do a one-arm swing with a very heavy kettlebell in heart style. But I think he's very arm dominant. And he calls it the one-arm swing. I've seen this mistake a couple of times now. When you switch hands, it's a hand-to-hand -hand swing. And one-arm swings means that you swing the kettlebell with one arm for a given set of time or a given set of reps. Molino. Molino. What's Molino? Well, there's a one exercise where you do the halo, where you go around your head. Here it goes. That's the halo. A lot of people have this problem with upper body mobility, T-spine mobility. I would recommend to open up your T-spine without any weights. Now, curls, the biceps. I don't think a kettlebell is a proper way to do curls. Dumbbells are way better, first of all, because of the weight distribution. And the way you have to grab the kettlebell is, is not optimal. Here we go with the clean. Mm. Hermano, that's not how you do it. <laughs> At least he's using some decent amount of weights. External rotating the shoulder when the bell comes up can put your shoulder in a delicate position. You want to internally rotate the shoulder. So you clean the weight up and you stay in the media line so the kettlebell wrecks right here. I'm always saying kettlebell, pull the kettlebell close to your heart. And when he goes into the backswing, no hip engagement. So he's muscling up the weight. He uses only his arms. And because he's decently strong, he can do it, but probably not for a long time. And then the switching, no hip engagement at all. It's something that you have to learn. Kettlebells are a lot of hip engagement. Press the hombros. Hombros? Hmm. And I'm learning some Spanish in here. If you have the kettlebell like this, where the weight pulls down behind your shoulder, this may put stress on your shoulder joint. So... I'm not saying that you cannot do it. You have to do it differently. And we will call it a scapular plane press, where you rest the kettlebell in the rack rest position, internally rotate, kettlebells in that medial line close to your heart. And then when you go into the scapular plane press, you go outside, you move your, your upper arm away from your body, use your full body on the other side, like counterbalance, like a, on a weight scale, and then you press it up, and then you come back. And with the extension, arms pointing out that's why he has to use his body as counterbalancing try to make sure that once you press the kettlebell in the top fixation that the biceps close to the ear thumbs pointing back and you are right in your center of mass and the way he transitions always use the backswing as a transition tool that's how you can really engage the hips. You can switch sides without hurting yourself because especially if the weight gets heavier and you drop it like this, then it will pull you down. Clean a sentadilla. So that's a clean in the squat, right? I've learned this sentadilla is a squat. Again, no hip engagement. Mm, arms a little bit too far out. Difficult position for the shoulder. And then a squat and switching it like this. How I would rather want to see you do it is bring the weight up properly in the rack rest position then you can go either directly in a squat or rest a split second and then go down and make sure you always engage in the biomechanics of your front squat i see dennis vazilev do this 
I am not a fan of jumping around with additional weights because of the stress that you may put on your joints. A lot of people have already problems with their joints. They already have pain. So jumping around with weights is a no-go for me. Some people are genetically built to do some exercises that other people would rather avoid. So I believe the jumping stuff with weights is one of those exercises. Press the rango completo. A X press, huh? So again, you are generating, if I'm interpreting this right, I'm just reading this powerful book that you can see behind me, Low Back Disorders, from Dr. Stuart McGill. This is twisting torque. Not something that I would recommend because it may add unnecessary stress on your spine. Romanian pull. What? Romanian pull? Hermano, ese ejercicio es un deadlift. <laughs> Brother, that's a deadlift. I mean, there is a Romanian deadlift, yes, but Romanian pull. Hermano, what's up? Swings rusas. So he engages in a hinge and with bent knees. That's more like the heart style version of a two arm swing, but the timing is off. So he's already in the hinge. It's already pulled back once the weight drops. So the lower back has to take the weight and his arms has to take the weight. So once he comes up, I see some engagement from the hips, but mostly I see it coming from his arms. That's something that you want to avoid. Always make sure you engage your hips properly. Horizontal press. Um, Luca informed me that Dan John came up with this exercise calling, calling it the heartbeat. Awareness exercise for your abdominal muscles, for your core, for your midsection. Side lunge. Huh? Now side lunge looks a little bit different. But I actually like that he does it that way because I don't think the actual side lunge is as valuable because it may put your lower back under some certain amount of stress. Sentadillas, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. What I would love to see is maybe push your knees out a little bit more. He seems to have lo a long femur. So people with long femurs or, or just long legs, they sometimes have trouble getting into a goblet squat where you push your knees out and engage in the biomechanics of a front squat. Flexion lateral. Now I'm reading this book like I'm saying. Um, these twisting exercises, I really have to dig into it. As far as I understand it, it's not the best thing for your spine, but I have to really dig deeper into it. Snatch, he starts in a hang position, very tricky position to start a snatch, like we say, the triangle. That's how you're supposed to start, then you pull it up, it uses a lot of arm dominant movements. Oh my brother. Now he's, doing, now he's doing half snatches. Yeah, that's a half snatch, if you bring it down into the rack and then into the swing. But no backswing motion, you know, this snatch works your hips and your midsection a lot. If it burns out your arms, then you only engage your arms instead of your hips. And that's what this looks like. And arm is away, make sure it's close to your body and thumbs pointing back to put your shoulder in external rotation when it's on top because this generates more space for your shoulder joint it's, and your shoulder is free to move. Rose de una mano. Make sure you don't let it twist because if you let it twist, I'm not saying it's a big problem, but like I said, that's why I bought this book. But if you twist, then you don't engage your midsection. So make sure your midsection is engaged to work against that anti-rotation and stick your pelvis out so that you have a straight line in your back. Rose explosivas, same thing. I see a little bit of a curved lumbar spine. One of the features of the ballistic rose, in my opinion, is the anti-rotation aspect because you pull it up, you let the weight drop, and then you have to engage your midsection to fight against the anti-rotation. If you don't do it, then maybe you lose some benefit of the ballistic row. And I like the ballistic row, but it can be very taxing on your lower back. And then you have to make sure that your lower back is safe. Molino Russo, what? Se un guerrero educado. <laughs> Brother, what? Well, never seen this. You know, the static exercises there sometimes, I believe, underutilized i do think they have some merit i like to engage them in the basics so i think when you rack rest the kettlebell in the clean then you have some form of of, of static work and when you go into the overhead top fixation in a snatch or a press or a jerk or whatever then you also have some static work and of course farmers walks 
In Farmer's Walks, we coined this term, we call it the Farmer's Life, where you start with a suitcase, start then go up in the clean, and then go up in the top fixation. Side swings, I'm not a fan of these, man. You see the juggling guys do it, but the juggling guys don't rotate as, as strong as he does. The juggling guys, they, they stay pretty much straight. Again, I have to mention this book, I gotta dive into it and understand if this generates twisting torque, which I believe it does to some degree. So that's why I'm educating myself because if you work ballistically, there's some aspects that you want to avoid because this element may put your body into a position where it shouldn't be. And this may lead to problems down the road. Buff Academy, hermano, hermano, hermano. Nuevos videos todos los miércoles, viernes y domingo. Suscríbete, comenta y comparte. That's what you have to do as well. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like it. Consider subscribing if you want to see more kettlebell content. And if you're looking for a kettlebell program that builds you up from a beginner to a slowly advanced trainee in the course of about three months, and you maybe want to combine it with some easy to follow nutrition coaching, because maybe you want to lose weight or you want to get in shape, then check out 90 Days of Kettlebells. You'll find the link in the description. 14-day free trial included.